Hey everybody, welcome back, and I just kind of want to follow up with that video I did yesterday talking about the whole new Star Wars film with the, oh, the activist feminist director who's supposed to be uh, doing her one job of making men feel uncomfortable, according to her own words in this interview here. Ironically, the Telegraph points out that a lot of people are upset about her feminist activism and not so much about the fact that she has literally no experience directing a, a film of this magnitude which uh, she actually says in her own words here. I think at the heart of everything, I am a storyteller and an activist. And um, my body of work over the last 20 years has been uh, guided by my activism. And every single piece of work that I've ever created has a piece of activism in it. It could be very overt or it could be covert, but it is there. And I think that as a storyteller, uh, I'm not sure if all of you know this, but I'm not a trained filmmaker. So I never went to film school. Um, I went to... So by her own admission, she's an activist. She's not a film school student. She, she has no background in making film other than a few documentaries. So switch over to the Marvel side of Disney. So now what you have is this new Echo TV show directed by Sydney Freeland, who, based on her own filmography, it's not a whole lot better. She does have actual TV shows she's directed in a couple short films, but all of these are like one episode, one episode, two episodes. Some shows you might have heard of, Grey's Anatomy, some I had never heard of before. Um, she directed one episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds that I know that most Star Trek fans absolutely despise that show. So now her big thing that she's directing is Echo. That's She's the one taking this on. Echo, which is already starting off on the wrong foot due to the fact that they are already revamping the character. Again, a character nobody who reads comics even cares about for the most part, but they're completely retooling the character, moving away from her original abilities because according to the showrunner, it's just her abilities are kind of lame, which that's not a good way to start off. You're literally starting off by saying, we're going to do a show about this character, but we have to change the character because the character sucks. Well, in that case, what's the point? But uh, this quote here says that Maya, the character, will be empowered by the Choctaw women that came before her. She will have several different abilities that manifest when she's threatened, each power belonging to a different ancestor. This is going to be the lamest shit show you, you, you're ever going to see. It's going to be terrible. And the funny part now is we have these quotes coming up from the actors who are in the show. Just listen to this. I think so many people feel like this project might be checking boxes in some way, but it's a it's a great story first and foremost that happens to center around an indigenous Choctaw community and around a deaf indigenous protagonist. <laughs> Admitting that she's nothing but a bunch of check boxes, and, and then this is even better. What did you guys learn about yourselves through playing Henry and Bonnie? I think what I learned about myself uh, portraying this was. Um, that I have a lot of um, hearing privilege, uh, being somebody who walks around the world as a, as a hearing person. Hearing privilege. Hearing privilege. Not that being deaf is a disability, but we have privilege because we can hear. And of course, she does the sign language for it, which, okay, that's cool, I guess. So now they're trying to spin this show as the most amazing thing that you've never seen. They're trying to put down comparisons that apparently the show has to Andor, which I had not seen this. Andor was actually a decent show by all standards. I mean, I thought the show was okay. Um, but, you know, Marvel has this tendency to say, oh, it's the, the, great, uh, the biggest show, the greatest show since the last show we did. Even if the last show sucked. They just try to spin it in that positive light. Now apparently somebody's making comparisons to Breaking Bad and John Wick. Absolutely not. So if you're listening, I apologize, this has no audio, but check out this fight scene and you can go back and slow it down for yourself. Nothing about this screams Breaking Bad. This is the most poorly filmed, poorly choreographed crap I've ever seen, supposed to be a superhero fight scene here. If you even just slow it down and pause it, the moves that they're doing in this are completely asinine. She literally gets down on her knees, turns around, extends her leg, he then grabs it instead of hitting it with the weirdest grip I've ever seen. A little ballet move there. It's like, what the hell is this? I know the director is like it's not her forte possibly and that, you know, I'm sure the actors, a certain commitment level is going to reflect in how the show actually looks. But don't they have stunt choreographers that do this for a living? This whole fight scene right here with the guns. So stupid. He just sits there on his elbow waiting for her to punch him. It's pathetic. And so, you know, the one positive to maybe come out of it is Kingpin, played by Vincent D'Onofrio, who I love as an actor. But now they're trying to spin him as being some Thanos-level 
uh, villain, and I'm sure they're trying to sell that because of the fact that they have King, Jonathan Majors, who is now thrown out on his ass due to his uh, conviction. So, of course, now what we have is Echo's sign language inclusion detailed by MCU show director. Representation can have positive consequences. That's all this show is about, is representation. Just look at the summary here. The Marvel series Echo fully embraces representation featuring the first deaf protagonist in the MCU. The show's director, Sidney Freeland, took sign language class and adapted the visual style to properly represent the character. And Echo's diverse cast, including Native American and Indigenous Canadian actors, marks a commitment to authentic casting and sets a new trend for representation in the MCU. Mind you, it's okay to race swap other characters. It's okay if they're white or a redhead to race swap them to be somebody who's a minority. But it's important that if it's a Native American character, we have to have actual accurate representation, right? Has to fit the what the skin color and the background is supposed to be, as long as it's not a white person. This is going to be such crap. This is great. I can't wait to see this. I'm probably not going to watch it. I didn't watch the last five Marvel shows, but I, I'll be excited to read the reviews and just see everyone crapping on it. Again, if you haven't seen that fight scene, go, go find it on Twitter. It, it is dog shit. I don't know who in their right mind thought this looked good, but yeah, it, it's going to be just a colossal failure. Anyways, let me know what you think about this down below. We'll catch you on the next one, and I'll talk to you later. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching the video. We do have two channels, one for daily uploads, the other one for more of my live streams and hot takes. Uh, links to both are down below, as well as the ability to join as a channel member for as little as $3 a month, and that'll greatly help us out. Much appreciated. We also have links to our Etsy accounts down below, as well as our website. We also have Locals and Subscribe Star. If you didn't want to support us on YouTube, you can support us through those. Thanks again for being here, and we will see you on the next one.